Good morning, Canvas Church. It's good to see you. Merry Christmas to all of you. And I invite you to stand. We're going to sing as people continue to, to come in. Let's uh, continue to sing one of our great Christmas songs of hope. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy my old God and sinners reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts pro is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored. Christ the video first. Sorry.
Father, thank you for that confidence that we can have in Christ, that indeed we are yours forever. Lord, as we surrender ourselves to you, as we surrender ourselves to your will and your purposes, though it may not always be comfortable, Lord, we know that you are always pursuing us, and that you all are always working all things out for your glory and for our good. So we say yes to you come this morning just with humble hearts. In this gymnasium here, Lord, we thank you that we can come and gather and just worship you with these simple songs. Oh, come let us
Jesus, we give you praise and glory and honor today that not only you came as a baby, but that you lived as Lord and Savior and Redeemer went to a cross and became the Lamb of God for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you're seated, we've been adding to our worship team, and we've had uh, Buki's been with us three times. Michelle, this is her second time. And Crystal, this is her first time with us this morning. So can you say a great big thank you and appreciation to her? Amen. Ashley? Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, uh, for uh, the people at Canvas that, um, that have stepped up um, in this season. Uh, I am so grateful. There's so many of you. There's there's people like Dale showing up at my house at 7 a.m., hooking up a trailer um, to get it here. There's men and women that are here at 7.30 unloading a trailer and setting up chairs and setting up banners. And there's people that are working with children. There's people that are working with babies. There's people that are running sound and running pro presenter and doing the live stream. And, and, there, and there's people that are, um, that are learning it as well. Some of these things are complicated. I mean, they don't, just, they don't just happen. They take a, a lot of training and a lot of equipping. And so um, we're working hard uh, trying to build these teams so that um, people only have to do what they do once a month. Um, so if you're sitting and not serving, um, I want to encourage you to ask God how you're supposed to be serving. Every one of us should be doing something. Uh, if you're part of the family. Now, if you're a guest, we welcome you to come sit at the table and, and, just, and just chill out. But if you're part of the family, um, I want to encourage you to, to put your hand to the plow. Uh, I tell my boys, you don't live in a hotel. You live in a house. We all unload the dishwasher. We all load the dishwasher. We all wash clothes. We all clean the floors. We all, we all participate. We work together. So uh, it's not a guilt trip. It's a challenge for you guys to ask God how you can serve. Because if you want to be blessed, blessing comes in serving others. Speaking of serving, uh, Jamie and Flavia, come on up here. I'm not sure where, where they are right now. Uh, come on up here. Can we give it up for these two girls? So um, it says in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus says, um, he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. And um, two of those workers that are answers to prayer are Jamie and Flavia. Flavia, yeah. <laughs> Flavia started a ministry inter- internship at Canvas a couple of uh, months ago. And Jamie um, crossed the border on Friday with a negative COVID test. All right. Uh, she crossed the border on Friday, got her work permit, and she is doing a two year internship. At Canvas, and these girls will be working with kids, they'll be working with students, they'll be participating with young adults, they'll be helping with setup and takedown and family fest and outreach camps. And um, they could work anywhere else and make a lot more money than they're gonna make giving their lives to Jesus and to Canvas. Um, they're both very educated, very smart, but they, they feel called to serve Jesus and to serve Canvas. And um, we're grateful uh, for both of them. So I hope that when you feel ready, you would invite them over for dinner and get to know them and build relationships with them. Uh, You'll be blessed to know both of these girls. I want to pray for them, and and I want you as well, um, just with the spirit of, hey, we're praying for you, we're praying with you. Just put your hand in front uh, of you, and let's just pray for these two girls. Thank God for them. So God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we say thank you that you answer prayer. And God, you say that we should ask the Lord of the harvest for workers. And I thank you for these two girls that are, they're given their time, they're given their lives to serve you, to serve the people of Canvas, to serve the people of Victoria. We pray that you would bless them, that you would provide everything they need, and that we as a church would extend love and hospitality to both of them. And let them know how much we appreciate them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you're worth kids today, if, you're, if you are a child and you want to go to Little Canvas or Canvas Kids, you can head out to the back of the room with Miss Sandy. She'll take you. And um, I'm not sure if you girls are in the room or back there. They might already be going to work. 
Uh, but you guys have fun this morning in Little Canvas and Canvas Kids. And uh, guys, I just want to say uh, again, um, thank you for praying for me. Uh, my recovery is, guys, it's a work in progress. I'm not, not running a marathon right now. I'm not lifting anything super heavy right now. Um, so thank you for praying for me. And, um, and when I mentioned, guys, we all need to work together. We all need to serve together. There's a lot of things I just can't do right now. And I can't do probably for the next few months. So um, I want to encourage all of us to lean in and to, to continue to serve together. Somebody close those back doors for me. Thanks. Um, yeah, so last week we, we started uh, the Advent season. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I gave you guys three challenges as you left. You remember what they were? The first one, I said, take a, take a scripture card and give it to somebody this week. Don't tell me right now who you gave it to, but text me later and tell me who you gave that card to. Uh, the second thing I challenge you to do is to take your name tag and to give it to somebody after the gathering and um, commit to pray for that person. Uh, all week long. So after our gathering, find that person, ask them how their week was, um, and and then give your name tag to somebody else this week. And the third thing I challenged you to do was what? To starting on Monday, I said, what if we all read the gospel of Luke together? Because the greatest thing you can do for me and the greatest thing you can do for Canvas is to get serious about pursuing Jesus. Let me just say that again. The greatest thing you can do for me the greatest thing you can do for Canvas, probably the, not probably, the greatest thing you can do for yourself and for your family and for our city is to get serious about pursuing Jesus. Like if you're alive, like if, if, if the Holy Spirit lights a fire in you, it's going to impact everybody around you. So the greatest thing you can do is to get serious about pursuing Jesus. So um, I hope that you're tracking through Luke. I don't know about you, but the last five or six days, I've been blown away by the gospel of Luke. Like, it is, it's incredible. Like, it is phenomenal. If you haven't started, don't feel guilty. Just jump in today and ask the Holy Spirit to speak through you, to you as you're reading Luke, okay? So Advent, it's a season what? It's a season of anticipation. It's a season of expectation. Guys, it's a season of celebration as we're what? We're celebrating the fact that Jesus came. And we're, celebra- and we're celebrating and anticipating the fact that what? He's, he's coming again. Like, do you guys believe that? That Jesus Christ, he's coming again. Like, he, he, he's going to come back. And, and a thousand years are like a day with God. So it's like, what's taking you so long? Like, could only be a couple days, right? In, in God's economy. So uh, Jesus Christ is coming again. So we're, we're remembering and we're celebrating the fact that he came and we're focusing on the fact that, um, that he's coming again. And you remember last week we, we talked about what? What was the word? Y'all give it to me. Hope. If you're online, type that. Hope. Or text me right now. Uh, hope. Uh, last week we talked about hope. And we said that, um, that biblical hope was what? It was anticipating. It's anticipating the goodness of God. A biblical hope is when you and I, we anticipate the goodness of God. It's, it's trusting and waiting on God even when things don't make sense sense. You ever been in a situation where life has fallen apart, things are not good, things don't make sense? You don't have much to hold on to, but you're still holding on to God in the midst of that? Yeah? Amen? Um, biblical hope is, it's also not desiring, it's, it's, it is not only desiring something good for the future, it's actually expecting it to happen. And we said, why is biblical hope important? I gave you about six things. This is a review from last week. Biblical hope and builds anticipation. It produces spiritual fruit. It fills our hearts with praise. It encourages us to live with boldness. It moves us from darkness and depression and despair to light, to a sense of fullness of life, to a sense of hopefulness. And it's also important because it creates a shift. It creates a shift spiritually and emotionally and relationally and, and physically. Uh, biblical hope does something. And, and I gave you three ways that you could pursue biblical hope this week. You remember what they were? 
You remember the first one was what? We, we want to we wanna focus on the promises of God. We want to focus on the promises of God. And the second one was I said, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with hope. Because you know what? I can't produce hope in you. Your mom can't even produce hope in you. Your dad can't produce hope in you. You can't go buy it at the, at the grocery store. Ho- hope comes from the Holy Spirit. And if you want to have hope, yeah, we meditate on the promises of God, but we have to ask the Holy Spirit to give us biblical hope. And the third thing I said was what I said, um, I said, start preaching to yourself. Start preaching to yourself. Instead of going around, oh, life stinks, life's so horrible, COVID's never going to end, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, oh my goodness. Instead of that, shift the conversation, look in the mirror and say, self, hope in God. Psalm chapter 42, verse 5, yeah, life stinks, life is hard, life is challenging, things aren't going well, but hope in God in the midst of what's going on. Preach to yourself. Uh, th- those were the three things that I challenged you to do this morning. We want to, um, we want to shift from hope to, um, to love. It was on that, that first Christmas morning that, um, that what happened, love, love, came, love came down. Uh, I, I love the verse that Jordan Milne shared with us a little while ago from John chapter 3, verse 16. Like it's, if you watched any football yesterday, like all the conference championships, you probably saw some signs that said what? 316. Or John 316. It's probably the most famous verse in the Bible. For God. For God, what? He so loved the world that he gave. He didn't hold on to He didn't hide. He didn't keep. He wasn't selfish. For God, what? He he so loved you. I want you to hear this. Like, if you've been around Christianity a long time, like, you can become callous to verses like this because you've heard it 10,000 times. But God so loved you. He so loved your spouse, your kids, your grandkids. He so loved your neighbor that drives you crazy. That keeps parking in the wrong spot. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever would put their faith, whoever would put their trust, whoever would put their hope in him, they wouldn't perish, they wouldn't die, but they would have, they would have everlasting life. They would have eternal life. And you know what that verse teaches us? It teaches us so much. But, but one of the things that it teaches us is that God gives his very best. A- and love, love leads us to give our very best. I want you to think about if you're a parent. Do you give your kids the leftovers? I mean, yeah, maybe for lunch the next day. Uh, but... <laughs> But do you really give your kids the leftovers? No. You love your kids, and you want to give them the very best. And and what God did with you, and what he did with me, what he did with us, and what he did with you that are watching online, God loved you so much. He gave his very best. He gave his one and only son. He gave his greatest treasure, the greatest thing that he has, the greatest thing that he could give. He gave that for you. Now listen, if you've been around Christianity a long time, it could be going over your head right now, or it could be hitting a heart of stone. But the reality is, guys... Whether we're a new believer, whether we're a believer a long time, or whether we're not a believer yet, the reality is it's true that God loved you. He didn't cause you to have to do a whole bunch of things so that you could earn his love. Yeah, if you do this, I love you. And if you do this, I love you. And if you do this, I love you. No, that's not what happened. He he showed you love when, when you didn't deserve it, and he showed me love when I didn't deserve it. And in 1 John chapter 316, um, different book of the Bible, same author, same disciple of Jesus. He says, he says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ, he laid down his life for you. Like, like he, love gives the best, but you know what else love does? It, love sacrifices. Love sacrifices. Love causes us to do the hard thing. 
Love might cause us to have to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning to bring our kids to the hockey arena or to bring our kids to basketball practice or to drive back and forth to the other end of town all day because there's a basketball tournament going on in the far end of the city. That was me yesterday. Um, uh, uh, love causes us to, it causes us to give the best, but it causes us to, to make a sacrifice. And we do that so often for the people we love. Love causes us to do some strange things, doesn't it? John said it this way in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. He said, this is how God showed his love. He put his love on display in this way among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. I was having a conversation with somebody this week. And um, they were telling me about somebody that they care about that's making a lot of poor choices right now. A lot of poor choices. And you're like, was it me? Oh, no, <laughs> a lot of poor choices. And here's the only thing I could think about. God loves that person so much. He's going to go after them. And he's going to show them how much he loves them. And even though they are being wild and crazy and rebellious and doing their own thing, God is going to pursue them. God's going to go after them. God is going to let that person know how much he loves them, how crazy he is about that person. It's going to happen. I promise you it's going to happen because that's the God that I know. He's a God who came after me when I was doing my own thing. When I was being a punk teenager, he came after me. And he came after a lot of you. Maybe when you were a child, maybe when you were a teenager, maybe when you were a young adult, maybe in the middle, in the middle ages of your life. But that's what God does. He, he pursues us even though we don't even deserve to be pursued. You, you see, there's a difference between religion and relationship. You know what religion does? It sucks the life out of you. It wears you out. It exhausts you. And it tells you, you do all these things. And then God will be okay with you, or he'll be pleased with you. But relationship, which I think is the biblical essence of the Christian faith, it doesn't say do all these things and God will be pleased with you. No, it says that God loved you in your unlovable state. And he pursued you, and he extended grace and mercy and kindness to you when you didn't deserve it. And then we respond to that. And it's like, oh my goodness, it's not about me doing all these things. It's about me responding to this amazing love that God extended to me. A few weeks ago, you might have had this experience that I had. I drove by a gas station, and there was a big sign, and it said, no gas. Anybody else have that experience? Yeah, probably so. Um, you had that experience. Go ahead. And you, you passed the gas station this, a few weeks ago. No gas. Some of you online, just, just type in no gas. Um, and, I, and I started thinking. I said, you know, what are gas stations known for? They're, they're not known for their Slurpees, although some of them probably have good Slurpees. Uh, they're not known for their bags of ice, although most of them have ice, especially in the summer. Um, they're not known maybe for their pop or for getting a loaf of bread or getting a gallon of milk, although you can get that at most gas stations. What are gas stations known for? They're known for gas. And I started thinking, I said, you know, the Christian faith is known for what? It's known for love. It's known for the love of God, and it's known for the love of the people of God. And if we put a sign out front that said, welcome to Canvas, no love here, that would be pretty strange. It, does, it doesn't, doesn't settle with you, does it? It doesn't settle with me. No love, no faith, no sacrifice, no hope, no peace. Go somewhere else. But that's not the Christian faith. The Christian faith is it's that love came down. It's that when you and I weren't even thinking about love, God extended love. It reminded me a story about 10 years ago when I was still in Biloxi, Mississippi, pastoring down there. I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken. I think it's the last time I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's been like 10 years. Um, and I went through the drive-thru. And I said, I'd like to get a box of chicken. Half original, half crispy. They said, sir, we don't have any chicken. 
And one of my boys were in the car with me. I think it was Max, and I'm excited that he and Mitchell are coming back on Saturday. We miss those guys. And, and, and we looked at one another, and, um, and I said, sir, I said, isn't this Kentucky Fried Chicken? And he said, oh, yes, sir, we have French fries, and we got biscuits, and um, we got drinks. And I said, but you don't have any chicken. And he said, no, we're, we're, just, we're just out of chicken right now. And whether it's a gas station that says we don't have any gas, or whether it's a chicken place that says we don't have any chicken, it, it sounds strange, doesn't it? You think about the church. You think about the body of Christ. You think about the family of God. You think about Canvas or other churches in our city or in our country or other churches in the world. When you think about those churches, uh, one of the most foundational things is love. And, and that's one of the things that we're celebrating at Christmas. Yeah, we're celebrating the hope. That, that we have hope because the light stepped out of darkness and light came into the world in the midst of a gloomy and dark time. But that light that came, it was, it was the word. It was the love. It was the love of God in the person of Jesus. I want to show you a funny video to kind of illustrate this a little bit, and then we'll go on from there. The guys are going to roll that video clip um, in the room, and they'll roll it online uh, as well. Hey, welcome. I'm the Christmas search engine, and I can help you find anything related to DIY Christmas decorations. Oh, okay. Um, let's jump right in. Here we go. <laughs> what date Christmas this year? Uh, December 25th. What date Christmas next year? December 25th. Song that goes. Um, I think I know what you're looking for. How cook ham? Okay. How cook ham fast? Uh... Oh, ham flamethrower recipe. Wait, what? Christmas present mom. Nice. Cheap. Nice. What day Christmas 2035? Are you serious? Is Santa Claus real? Uh, you should maybe ask your parents about that. Gift wrap bowling ball. Please be careful. Custom dog Christmas. Sorry, what? Christmas dog custom cute. Oh, you mean costume? Christmas dog costume cute! Gift wrap accordion. Uh, that's gonna be tricky. <laughs> Can I drink expired eggnog? No. What happens if drink expired eggnog? Why'd you even ask me in the first place? Dealing with relatives. Okay. Dealing with nosy relatives. Oh, uh, well... Dealing with my nosy, overbearing relatives who won't stay out of my business. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's pretty much all the same stuff. <laughs> Gift wrap a saddle. Who are you buying this stuff for? Santa Claus riding a unicorn. Santa Claus riding a unicorn socks. Is that a thing? Search it up. Oh, wow. Here they are. Take my money. Norwegian tree skirts. How many lights, one outlet? Elf pajamas. Dog singing Christmas carols. <sighs> oh, hello. What is Christmas really about? <laughs> I've got just the thing. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So, Jesus? Jesus. May I? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Huh. How fix burnt ham? Okay. Uh, you know what? Forget it. Pizza delivery Christmas Eve. <laughs> no problem. You know, there's a lot of truth. A lot of truth in that, right? Uh, there's all kinds of things that are um, that they're pulling us in all different kinds of directions. And yeah, when you go to the gas station, they're going to try to get you to buy a Slurpee and some ice and a drink and all that stuff. And there's nothing wrong with the Slurpee or the ice or the drink. 
but you go to the gas station to get the gas. And when you think about the church, or when you think about Christmas, it's about love coming down. You know, shortly before we um, came back to Victoria after my health crisis, um, once the doctor gave me clearance, we, um, we went to see our boys in Virginia. And uh, the closest place that we could fly that was a reasonable airport was Washington, D.C. And um, we stayed our first night in D.C. And I told April, I said, one of my dreams over the last few years has been to go to the Bible Museum um, in Washington, D.C. It's right in the same area that all the Smithsonian's are. And I would say that if you ever get a chance to go, it is incredible. And I'll tell you more about it later. But I was on the fourth floor of the Bible Museum. And I was looking at all these different Bibles that were um, hundreds and hundreds of years old, some of them uh, well over a thousand years old. And there was this one parchment, this one manuscript that was discovered in Egypt that was, um, it was as old as 200 AD. I want you to think about that. That's like, it's like really old. And it was the last few verses of the Gospel of Luke which you're going to get to in about 19 days if you stick with us. And then it was um, John chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 16. And um, I stood there looking at this parchment, and I said, God, there's this piece of papyrus that's 1,800 years old. And it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then you get down to verse 14, and it says, and the Word, God, the one that was there in the beginning, and the Word, the mighty God, became flesh. He became flesh and blood, and he moved into your world in the form of a baby, in Bethlehem, and I was so struck by that parchment. I was overwhelmed that here I am looking at a parchment that was written 1,800 years ago, probably by one of the disciples, disciples, disciples. So like probably two generations past, like John the disciple. This guy's writing. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Guys, God loved you so much that He became a person. He, he took on human form. He lived a sinless life. He died a gruesome death on a cross, and He rose from the dead, and He ascended into heaven. That's what the Christian faith is all, that's what it's all about. It's about God giving His best. It's about love coming down. Uh, one of the things that I challenged you to do as you were going through Luke was to text me something that God was teaching you or email me or Facebook message me or Instagram message me, like multiple forms of communication. And I was so blessed by the responses that I was getting from a lot of you. And I would encourage you to to do that. When you go to home tomorrow, you're probably going to be reading Luke chapter um, 8 if you're tracking with us, send me something from Luke 8. It can even be one word. You know one of the things that, that I still can't get past uh, from this past week? In Luke chapter 2, verse 7, Mary had just had the baby. Mary's there. Joseph's there. I don't think the wise men are there yet. Probably a couple more years. Uh, but it says this in Luke chapter 2, verse 7. It says, And, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. There was no room for the Son of God. There was no room for the Savior of the world. There was no room for, for the God-man. And here we are 2,000 years later, and I wonder how much room in your life has been made available to Jesus. How much time in your calendar is made available to Jesus? How, how much time in your family is made available to Jesus? How, how much of your checking account is made available to Jesus? 
we're giving it to everything. But I wonder if there is any space left for the Son of God who loved you so much that he laid down his life so that you could have life. And reality is he doesn't want some room. He wants the whole house. Like he wants all of you. He wants all of me. He wants to not just be on, on the shelf. He, he wants to be the master and the Lord of our hearts. A year ago, a good friend sitting down in her living room with she and her husband, she said, in our house, Jesus is on the roof. And that implied Jesus isn't in the center of the room right now. And right when I read that verse, I thought about that phrase again. Hey, guys, that's not where Jesus wants to be. And you're not going to experience hope and love and peace and joy. You're not going to experience fullness of life if Jesus doesn't have his place on the throne of your heart and on the throne of my heart. This same John that wrote John, that wrote 1 John, he wrote the book of Revelation. He was the only disciple who didn't uh, get martyred for his faith. He ended up on the island of Patmos, and he's having all these visions, probably 90 A.D., and in John chapter 3, 16, he gets this word from Jesus, and, and Jesus says this. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will eat with him and he with me. Now, 2,000 years ago, one of the most intimate relational things you could do was to sit at a table together and eat together. I know now it's this fast food culture and we're quick, eating quick and we're moving on. But back then it could have been a three, four, five, six hour ordeal. They're sitting, they're eating, they're sharing life, they're fellowship. And, and basically what Jesus is saying is he's saying, I'm knocking on the door and I'm a gentleman. I'm not going to force my way into your life. And he's not going to force his way into your life. He's not going to force his way into my life. But this morning, I think it's a wake-up call for some of us in the room and some of us online. That Jesus is knocking on the door of your life and my life. And he's saying, guys, open the door. I want to come in. I want you to experience fullness of life. I want you to experience fullness of relationship with me. He's not going to be the big bad wolf. He's not going to huff and puff and tell you he's going to blow your house down. It's not going to happen. But what he will do is he'll keep pursuing you because he loves you. He'll keep knocking on the door of your heart because he loves you. And as long as I'm your pastor, as long as God leaves me here, I'm going to keep praying for you. And I'm going to keep challenging you to open the door of your heart to a relationship with him. And if you're here this morning and you've never taken that step of faith, I want to challenge you. Well, I've been baptized. No, 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 no. I want to challenge you to open your life to Jesus and to ask him to take his rightful place, which is to be the king of your life, to be the boss of your life, to be the master of your life, to be the, to be the Lord of your life. And there's so many of us, that culture and everything that's happened has caused him not to be front and center. And... Um, no judgment this morning, but just a sense of love that he would love you so much that he wants you to put him back in the center of your life so that you can experience fullness and joy and peace and hope. Let's pray together as the band comes back. And as we pray this morning, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity in the room and online this morning. Would you just, in your heart, say, Jesus, would you come into my life and save me? Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. 
and for so many of us in the room where Jesus isn't front and center, uh, would you just take a moment and, and say, Jesus, I, I want to restore you to your rightful place in my life. King and Lord and master and boss. Yes, Savior and friend. But give you authority over my life. God, we are humbled that you extended such love to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As Dean and the band leads us in another song of worship, if, if you need prayer this morning, I'm going to hang out over there by the Joy to the World sign. I'm going to ask Evan to hang out in the back over there. And I'm going to ask Miss Carla even. Maybe she would hang out up there and be available for prayer. And uh, maybe Levi and Nicole would be available for prayer as well. And you might need somebody to pray with you this morning. And uh, there'll be some people that are standing around the room that will be glad to pray with you. Um, let's stand together as we sing. And you respond to the Holy Spirit as, um, as the Spirit is leading you. Thank you, Ashley, for bringing the word God put on your heart today. Love. Love came down and rescued us. And God will speak to our hearts and how we can display that love to a world that is aching. Aching for it right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Help us to love you back. And love others in your name. Because all things have passed away. And your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. The things that we thought were dead, I breathe in. you've done, we will pour out our love, this will be our anthem song, Jesus we song i'm reminded of the second part of that verse it says uh, as christ has laid down his life so that we to lay down our lives for one another and i was thinking of this family that i know that uh, 
They're always opening up their homes to people. And uh, the last number of years, they've had a group of street musicians who were just hanging out. And another young guy who was just down and out on the streets, and they opened their home. They've opened up their home to young moms who are single and having a baby and don't have anybody. They open their home to seniors who have no family around and have no way to pay a lot of their bills. They give of their lives. And that's what Ashley's talking about today. How do we give our lives? How do we lay it down? Because the whole world is waiting for the people of God to truly display the love of the Father. So when we sing this chorus one more time, Jesus, we love you. Let it not just be our words, but may we be listening to how we can display that love to Jesus through to others. Amen. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. Help us to show this love to others, Jesus. We love you. We don't want it just to be words. Oh, we love you. And you are the one our hearts adore. So we surrender all. We love you because you are the one our hearts adore. Yeah, Father, we um, we just want to say that we love you because you love us, and because we've experienced that love, we're able to love you back and. And as a faith family right now, we want to collectively, we want to pray for Tara and for Ailey, Lord, uh, two people that are part of our family that we care about and that we love. And um, God, in the spirit of prayer, we, we lift them up to you. Tara and Ailey were in a bad accident last night, and we pray for them. God, we pray for recovery for them. We thank you that, that they're going to be okay, but God, we pray um, healing over their bodies. Uh, God, we pray that you would provide everything that they need. Uh, God, in this season, show us as a church what we can do to help, how we can be a blessing to them on the back end of, um, of something really serious that happened to them. We thank you for them. God, help us to be a people that extend love to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. And um, I know I didn't share this with you earlier, but, but last night, Tara was in a bad accident, and the car, I think, is totaled, and um, they're okay, um, could have issues with whiplash or other stuff, we don't know yet, but let's pray for Tara and let's find out what we can do as a church to help she and help her daughter um, in this season. I know they're supposed to be moving into a new place soon, it's hard to move when you don't have a car, uh, there's lots of, lots of things, so let's, let's extend love to Tara and to Ailey um, in this season. Um, do you realize uh, how much of a tragedy it would have been on our city if we had to go a long time without gas? I want you to think about that for a minute. Like, you wouldn't have gotten groceries. You wouldn't have gotten the plumber to your house. You wouldn't have gotten the electrician to your house. You wouldn't have been able to get your kids to school or basketball. You would have been home, probably with no heat eventually. I want you to think about how much of a tragedy that would have been if you had to go a long time without gas. I want you to think about the tragedy that happens in our city if people go a long time without experiencing the love of God. And you and I are his hands and feet. Don't be lazy. Don't be complacent. Don't be passive. Look for ways this Christmas season to love other people. You'll be blessed more than they'll be blessed. James? Can we thank God for James coming back, being back? 
I know we had some other commitments the last couple weeks, but um, what a blessing to have you back, James. Uh, Dean's going to grab your mic. Yeah. And, um, and, and you know, while, while James comes back, I just have to, I know we're probably going longer than we used to go, but we still got a few minutes. Um, I just have to say a couple things. One, somebody in our church called James this week and said, James, I miss you painting. I mean, that's not why he's painting today. He was already scheduled to paint today. But I just think that's pretty cool that somebody was intentional at doing that. Um, and I bet that helped James to feel appreciated because she did that. I, I, I don't know. Did somebody call you this week? Well, they texted me. They texted you. That's yeah. awesome. Communication. Yeah. <laughs> so one more thing that I would say, uh, a young lady in our church in grade five, she said, um, I know I'm away from the camera now, so you should be here this morning and not watching online. I'm sorry. If you're watching online, praise God that we have that form of communication. Um, but a, a, young, a young lady last week, she said, um, Pastor Ashley, would it be okay if I get some greenery stuff from outside and just add a little bit to the Advent candle? And you know what? I was like, thank you, God, that people, they see something that has to be done, and they do it. They're intentional. Yeah. Like, Fiona, I've been thanking God for you all week because of your intentionality. And I would say that to all of us. Like all of us, let's be intentional. If you see something that's got to be done, do it. If somebody is a guest today that you don't know, invite them to your house this week for dinner or next week for dinner. If you see somebody that has a real need, help to meet, help to meet that need. Let's be intentional and not passive. Love, I think, causes us to be intentional. I'm sorry, I keep preaching. Uh, my energy's coming back, right? Thank you, God. Uh, James. Hey. I'm super glad your energy is coming back, Ashley. And um, yeah, oh man, I didn't know about Tara, so I, I pray for my pray along with all of you for her and for anyone else who is sick or hurting in this place. And I'm thankful for Canvas Church and to be able to paint here. Um, we need the light of Christ. This canvas is about that. It's about this season that we're in, the season of, of hope and love. And, um, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm wrestling with the canvas. This one felt like that a bit. But what I tried to do was have, have um, uh, this little child in the corner here who is in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and um, somebody who loves him, helping him light the candle and join this procession that's entering into the city. It's... It's entering into the little house where Jesus would have been staying after they, they moved to Nazareth. Um, actually, from, to Bethlehem, sorry. But I have this city in the background there, a city like a modern city, because we need to have that light come from us as we walk in procession, as we allow this story to touch our hearts mm -hmm. and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what that star represents. It's the Holy Spirit that, that, that creative miracle where Mary was able to have a child mm -hmm. by the very power of God. Mm -hmm. And we need that light and that power working in our lives and to go into the city. That's my prayer for me and my family and for Canvas Church. Amen. Thanks, James. So um, what am I going to challenge you to do? I'm going to challenge you to take your name tag before you leave, give it to somebody, and um, take their name tag. Commit to pray for that person this week. If you know whose name tag you had last week, try to find that person too if you can, and uh, ask them how their week was going. Um, second thing, tomorrow morning, uh, we should be in Luke 8, right, as a faith family. And a lot of you might be like, I don't know where to start reading in the Bible. Like, Luke 8, tomorrow morning, it's all about Jesus, all right? And if you need help with, like, questions and stuff, if you go to the Canvas Church Victoria app and you click on the Daily Reset, there's questions and things to help you engage in Luke chapter 8. There's newsletters on the back tables. Um, there's lots of Christmas stuff coming, guys. Like, Friday, we're going to party. Like, it's 2021. Yeah. And we're going to have a volunteer Christmas party. If you volunteer in any way at Canvas, you're invited to come. But do 
email. Um, I would normally say email Tara at canvaschurch.ca. Continue to email her um, on that, and um, just because she's already collecting those names. That's Friday night. Next Wednesday, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, there's a youth Christmas party. That Friday, there's a young adult Christmas party. There's a lot going on. On that newsletter, it says that the candlelight service is at the Westin. It's not. It's going to be in here, okay? So Christmas Eve, there's a candlelight service in this room, um, December 25th at 5 o'clock. There'll be more information um, about that later. If you still have a job and you're still working, um, I want to encourage you to give to support the ministry at Canvas. We are $48,000 in the hole for this year. Um, there's some of you that can write five and ten and twenty thousand dollar checks, and it'd be like me going to Starbucks and getting a coffee. Um, there's others of you that it would hurt to write a hundred dollar check. Um, but I want to encourage you between now and the end of the year to give to Canvas so that we can end the year not in the negative. Okay, um, and it, and I want to encourage you to consider designating part of that money for benevolence. So, like, if you give $1,000 to Canvas, give it to Canvas, but make a note um, 200 toward benevolence or 100 toward benevolence. And if you're struggling this Christmas season, uh, let me know because we want to be a blessing to you. We don't want anybody in our faith family struggling and having a difficult time. So if God has blessed you, give. If you're struggling, let me know so that we can be a blessing to you and so that we can help you and we can help your family in this season, okay? Um, you can give. Offering boxes are in the back. You can do an e-transfer to Canvas Church. The email is Audrey at Canvas Church. You can also give online on the app. Guys, I love you. We came back to Victoria because we love you. We came back to Victoria because God called us to Victoria. He is not finished with us yet, okay? He's got great things that he wants to do through us. So let's, let's go after Jesus and let's see what he has, okay? Have an awesome day. I'm going to be outside. Love to visit with you before you leave. God bless you guys.